Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We're going to be right back with today's guest, but as always, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors. Now, you've heard me say many times before, these are companies that I used as an athletic director, and I really recommend that you use them too. So take the next three minutes, listen to our shout outs, then listen to our interview, and then go visit these sponsors. I'm telling you, you're going to be glad you did. Here we go. We want to say thanks to Huddle for their support of the podcast. You know, as a football coach, I used Huddle for years. But when I became an athletic director, I made sure that our school was a Huddle school. And our coaches just loved the platform. Our kids loved the platform, obviously, for the videos. Our parents even loved it for the streaming. Go to Huddle.com. Join the 8 million users. Turn your school into a Huddle school. We also want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com, schedule a live web demo to see their score tables and their score boards in action. Probably one of the best purchases I ever made was our Sideline Interactive indoor score table. Go to sidelineinteractive.com for more information. We also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. I don't think I need to say anything more. Go to hometownticketing.com. It's digital ticketing that offers more. We want to say thanks to Gipper, uh, the official social media content creation platform for the podcast. You know, your student athletes are on social media. And if you're not creating promotions to celebrate their accomplishments and brag a little bit about your program, you're really missing out. Go to gipper.com, their team. We'll have you creating world-class content in seconds, and it's so easy, even I can do it. Go to Gipper.com for more information. We want to say thanks to Snap Raise. Have you ever spent weeks and weeks with a fundraising platform and ended up with uh, very little return on investment? Stop right here. Go to SnapRaise.com. Hands down, the best online fundraiser out there. Our Parents, our coaches, our finance office loved it because it worked and it was so easy to use. Go to snapraise.com. You can check out their other great platforms. But if you're looking for a fundraiser, you found it. Go to snapraise.com. We'd also like to thank Vital Signs Wall of Fame. If you're looking for a really cool way to display your school record boards for all the teams, for all the events, or your school's Hall of Fame, Go to VitalSignsWallOfFame.com and take a look at their interactive touchscreen video consoles. It's also a great way to share your school's unique history and brag about your proudest moments. The website is VitalSignsWallOfFame.com. Check them out today. We also want to thank Home Campus. Home Campus is a platform that you're going to use every single day. Things like scheduling, uploading rosters and results, communicating, communicating with people in your uh, network, communicating with your state. How about athletic eligibility and clearance? Who doesn't do that every day? Home Campus does all of these things and more. It does it better and it does it faster. Go to homecampus.com to get started. That's it, homecampus.com. We also want to say thank you to the Ohio University Online Masters in Athletic Administration. My assistant AD got his master's from Ohio University's online program. He just raves about it. It's great content. He also completed 11 NIAAA leadership training courses towards his CAA through the Ohio University program. To get started, go to ohio.edu slash info slash MAA, the Ohio University Online Master's in Athletic Administration. We also want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys, by Lifetrack. Athletic directors already get feedback, but it's usually from a very small group that just want to complain about everything. Athletic Surveys is going to connect you to that group, but they're also going to connect you to the 98% that supports your program. And the data that they provide is incredibly valuable, especially when you're sitting down with that frustrated parent, or maybe your principal, or even your school board. Go to athleticsurveys.com. They'll create a custom survey that lets you take the pulse of everybody in your program. That's athleticsurveys.com. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. 
We're going to Texas today, and our guest is Haley Caldwell. She has an incredible athletic background at, I, I can say, because I'm so old, a very young age. Uh, she is the head softball coach at Northeast Texas Community College. She's going to share that and more, but Haley Caldwell, welcome to the Educational AD Podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to get on here and talk some shop. All right. Well, again, uh, for our listeners, I, I, Haley and I met, uh, you know, the old fashioned way on LinkedIn, uh, was very impressed uh, with, again, her resume and thought she'd be a great guest for our listeners. So let's dive right into it. Haley, we always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So give us that quick bio, uh, maybe take us up through your own uh, high school uh, and college playing days, and then we'll take a break. But what's the Haley Caldwell origin story? So the Haley Caldwell origin story is that I am a small town girl. I grew up uh, on a farm in Texas and I went to a little uh, 2A, 3A school district. Back in my day, it was 2A. Now it's 3A. It's called SNS Consolidated. And it was so um, small that they combined, I think, like three towns in the area. That's why it's called Consolidated. Right. So um, I grew up at SNS in Sadler, Texas. Uh, shout out, go Rams. And um, I played every sport there was there. So I was a multi sport athlete softball, volleyball, basketball, track, golf. And I obviously played softball for the school. And I showed FFA animals. So I showed pigs growing up. And then on top of all that, I played, um, I was a competitive cheerleader for six years. And one day my dad was like, hey, um, would you be interested in starting select softball? And I was like, heck yeah. You know, and I was, I was pretty late to the game in the select softball world. I started when I was 12. And these days, kids are starting, you know, 8U, 10U. So I was late to the game, but I was just a multi-sport athlete. So it was very easy for me to, you know, um, my mom was kind of upset that I stopped competitive cheer because that's what I wanted to really do in college. And I was fair on my way to do that. And then my dad was like, well, we just, it's so expensive. We can't really afford both. And, and so well, I'm a daddy's girl course. And he was like, okay, pick one. And of course I picked softball. And so that's kind of how I got started going um, on the college softball route. So I played um, with Texas Glory. It's one of the renowned softball orgs in the state of Texas. It's very prestigious. And I did that for up until 12U all the way to 18U. So I played that um, for my dad. He was the coach. So that was a cool experience. And, but he was not hard or uh, easy on me whatsoever. <laughs> so um, I did that all growing up. And then finally I got an opportunity to play in college. I signed to play softball at West Texas A&M for Coach Blaskowski. And being from a small town, um, I didn't really know how to acclimate to a big, you know, school. And so I didn't really know how to study. Um, so I ended up transferring um, mid-semester with a 3.0 GPA and um, not because I was like a party girl, you know, in the fall as a college athlete. Um, I just really was not acclimated to the bigger classrooms. And um, so I ended up transferring out and I'll own that. Um, so I ended up transferring out to a junior college which I absolutely loved. So in hindsight, I should have probably just gone the JUCO route instead of being thrown into the bigger classrooms. Um, so I transferred to North Central Texas College in Gainesville, which is also like my hometown area. And it wasn't too far from home, maybe like 20 minutes. So I loved my time as a JUCO bandit. I met my best friends. And if you're a JUCO person, you know that it's just a different type of bond that you create with your teammates and coaches. Um, and I had the time of my life there. And then after that, um, I had some all-conference awards. Um, we made it to, you know, regional tournament, things like that. And then I had the opportunity to go back to a four-year at Texas Women's University in Denton. 
And um, from there on, I was like, okay, like I got this school thing under wraps, like I'm going to make all A's now, you know, so it was like a learning curve for me. And I didn't want to ever, you know, get in that um, bind again, you know, with my GPA and just not knowing really how school works. So I was, I went to Texas Women's and I started in right field almost every single game and I batted, I batted in the six to nine hole, you know, I just moved up and down. And I played for Coach Brewster. And with my class, the junior, senior class, we ended up at the uh, College World Series, Division II College World Series in Salem, Virginia. And for the first time in school history. So we did that, which was amazing. And then unfortunately, my head coach, you know, got us to the uh, World Series. He ended up leaving uh, my senior year to go to Texas A&M Commerce. And um, a few of us followed him there and I started my master's degree. <laughs> so I ended up with a bachelor's in kinesiology from Texas Women's and then my master's degree from Texas A&M Commerce, who's now division one, um, with a master's degree in science, athletic administration. So that's pretty much my high school college days. Well, I appreciate you sharing. And again, uh, a lot of stops. Um, I want to go all the way back to your high school days, you know, you mentioned, you know, small school, small town, but you participated in all those sports growing up. Um, and I know you, your dad got you involved, you know, with the travel ball, but from the high school perspective, uh, again, because you are of that age, did any of your high school coaches, you know, the volleyball coach or the softball coach or the cheer coach say, Haley, you need to give up those other sports and focus on that one sport. Uh, was that a thing for you in high school or did you just keep playing all those high school sports? Absolutely not. That was never said to me at all. And I think um, just being a multi-sport athlete, it made me better and it made more coaches want me involved in their programs. Like I was just that kid that showed up every day and gave a hundred percent and then some. And um, you know, I was just, I led by example on the field court, you know, course, whatever. But, um, I truly believe that because I was involved in multiple sports, like it made me a better softball player. You know, every single person listening to this, that's an athletic director is high-fiving the screen right now, because, you know, again, <laughs> that's, that's the message that we try to get across. If you are, you have the talent and you want to work at it. There's a fit for you at the college level, but the best way to get there is to do those multiple sports. Thank you uh, for sharing that nugget. We're going to go and take a go. We're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, once again, our guest today is Haley Caldwell. She's the head softball coach at Northeast Texas Community College. We're going to hear more about her journey when we come back. So please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thanks to Huddle for their support of the podcast. You know, as a football coach, I used Huddle for years. But when I became an athletic director, I made sure that our school was a Huddle school. And our coaches, all of our coaches, just loved the tools that Huddle provided that allowed them to coach our kids better. Our student athletes loved it because of the videos. Our parents loved Huddle because of the streaming functions. Join the 8 million users. Go to huddle.com. Turn your school into a huddle school. We also want to say thanks to Sideline Interactive, indoor score tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com. Schedule a live web demo to see their score tables and their score boards in action. Probably one of the best purchases I ever made was our Sideline Interactive indoor score table. Go to sidelineinteractive.com for more information. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Educational 80 Podcast. Haley, you uh, took us on your uh, collegiate journey, had some great stops, uh, sounds like some great adventures, too. Um, share with our listeners, if you can, your journey post-college. Um, you know, you're right now you're the head coach at a community college, but uh, you had some stops along the way. Uh, go ahead and share those with our listeners. Yes, sir. So whenever I was, um, I my four years was up, I was done playing softball at Texas A&M Commerce. I um, was still in my master's degree program. I only had a few classes left. 
and I was teetering be becoming like a GA and staying on staff or I, um, you know, I was older. So I was like, man, I really just want to go work and start my career. Um, in hindsight, um, now looking back, I wish that I would have stayed as a GA. Um, cause I feel like since I went into high school ball, it was just harder for me to get back to college. Like I am now. Um, but I don't regret like my journey at all. So with that being said, whenever I stopped playing, I went to coach at a little 1A school district called Tioga and it's right down the uh, road from where I'm from. It's in North Texas. And it was so small that the high school, middle school and elementary were all in one building. So you had high schoolers passing little kindergartners and first graders on their way to class oftentimes. And it was just a cool atmosphere uh, to be a part of. Um, I started the softball program there and um, we made it to playoffs our first year. And, but we lost out in the first round. Um, I ended up hiring one of my college teammates at North Central to come be my assistant. And it was just a fun, fun year to be a, a Tioga Bulldog. So opening up that, um program my first year like starting the program uh straight out of college I didn't really realize how tough it was gonna be to be a grad grad student um and teaching coaching full-time I taught chemistry IPC and physics um as well and so I had no life on the weekends because I was just busy with grad school work but luckily it helped to that I had my friend coaching beside me um, but, you know, even coming straight out of college, it was hard for me to adjust a little bit because the girls just weren't at the level that like my so softball IQ was, I had to literally teach them everything. So when I said, Hey, go shag the balls, they're like, what? And I was like, Oh boy. <laughs> so that's where I started out. And after that first year, I had a AD call me from Whitesboro, which is a 3A school up the road, and they had a softball position open, and it was PE, um, and so I would only be assistant volleyball and head softball, whereas at Tioga, not only was, you know, I was in grad school, I was head softball, I was junior high basketball, I was assistant volleyball, um, it was just a lot, you know, on top of teaching uh, chemistry, IPC, and physics, so I heard, you know, head softball, volleyball, and PE, I was like, heck yeah, like say less. <laughs> so I, um, I ended up leaving Tioga to go to Whitesboro and I was at Whitesboro for, I think five years, um, given the COVID year, if you count that. And I love my time at Whitesboro. They have a great culture there. We got a new AD after my first two years and I had a really fun time building the program there with those athletes, because like myself, they're all multi-sport athletes at that school district. And it had been encouraged from them being at the middle school, going into the high school level. So that was really fun to be a part of. Uh, the first year at Whitesboro, we didn't win a single game in district. We got last place. <laughs> and so I was like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? And then my dad just kept, my dad and like my coaching buddies just kept reminding me like, it's not made overnight. And I was like, okay, like I got this. And I had really great assistant coaches while, during my time at Whitesboro. And over like the next school year, we got fourth in district. And then the next year was the COVID year. And we were well on our way because I had all the same athletes. So the freshman class that I had, I was going to have them, you know, the next four years. And I was so happy about that because they were so talented. Um, so going into uh, the year after COVID, so it would have been the freshman senior year, we ended up winning district. So it was nice to go from having that freshman group to not winning a single game to not only winning district, but beating the best team that was always out to get us, which is pot point. And then we went, I think, two or three rounds deep in the playoffs. So, you know, I felt like I was like, wow, OK, I I am happy with myself. I'm happy with my girls. I'm happy for our staff. Like it was such a magical, you know, experience. Like I had confidence in myself that I could build that with the people around me. So after that, 
I started receiving phone calls. People were trying to snatch me up, trying to get me to go to other schools. And I had always been interested in strength and conditioning. Um, at Whitesboro, the, one of the football coaches did it for the whole school. And I knew going back to my time, I had a great strength coach at Texas A&M Commerce, which is Lance Farmer. He was amazing. And he made me love strength and conditioning even more. And so I knew when I was at Whitesboro, I needed to get involved somehow to learn strength and conditioning. So I got involved in what was called the DFW Roundtable. Um, it's led by the Denton Geyer um, head, uh, head strength coach, uh, Kyle Keese, and some of his staff. So it was pretty localized. But through the NHSSCA, um, we had a roundtable put together, and that's when I started learning, you know, strength. Um, and adding certain things to my program. So I did that, you know, for a two, two years, highly involved in the round table, started going to conferences and just learning on my own. And whenever I got the call um, to go to be a head softball coach in South Texas and a strength coordinator, I was like, wow, this is awesome. So it was like all my hard work and learning, um, leveling, trying to level myself up for the next move was finally paying off. So I ended up taking a job at El Campo, Texas, go Rice Birds. And um, they're, they're very well known, you know, for football, you know, um, Ruben Owens is from there. He plays for Texas A&M right now. And he was amazing, you know, to get to teach in class. But um, so whenever I went to El Campo, I was in charge of girls strength and conditioning. So I got to program for the basketball team, volleyball, soccer, softball, um, and track girls, which was so fun to do because it was like, I wasn't just the head softball coach. I was their strength coach. And so it was, it was nice because all the head coaches got on board with what I was doing and implementing. Therefore, um, you know, they said that the basketball team was the hardest girls to get by in. And as soon as I implemented the strength program, they were like, boom, all in. All of them showed up every single day after school. We had fun in the weight room, and I taught them the why behind their doing certain things. That's the fastest way to get buy-in in my experience. Um, and then um, in the softball, in softball season, we ended up going undefeated district champs my first year there. And then um, – we went to the fourth round of playoffs. Not only did we um, beat the number two team that they had, or the second round of playoffs, we beat the team Huffman Hargrove that I heard about since the first day that I got on campus. They were like, we have to beat them. Um, and I was working all season, all school year to try to find film and ask around and find ways to beat this team so that we could get past them in playoffs because I knew that they were super good. So I found a way to beat them. Me and my girls, we put our heads together and uh, my assistant coaches, they helped as well. And we finally beat Huffman Hargrove. And it was the first year in so many years, I think it was like 15 years that they got past the second round of playoffs. So then not only did we get past the second round, we got past third round. And that was the first time in 22 years. So then we made it to the fourth round and we unfortunately lost out to Lake Belton. So um, not only did we, you know, make history, we made history three times. So that was an amazing experience to be a part of. Um, after that first year at El Campo, got another phone call um, from a, an athletic director in Canyon, Texas, which is near Amarillo. And I decided to go out there and open up a brand new school district or a school high school um, with three schools in the district, which is Canyon ISD. So I opened up the school at West Plains and we had a great season. You know, it was really hard um, to open up a new school and try to build the culture and, you know, build the softball program. I was PE there as well. And um, I was programming strength for the soft girl soccer, um, boys and girls, cross country and volleyball and softball. So I got to tie into the strength world, but I was also assistant cross country out there as well. Um, unfortunately, we it was like the first year we just set the foundation. Um, we did a lot of 
uh, fundamental work, and it was just constantly every single day. Um, I did not have any seniors on that team. Um, I mostly had freshmen and two juniors. <laughs> so it was very promising, and um, I enjoyed my time out there that first year. And unfortunately, we didn't make the playoffs, but it was a nice experience to go through because um, – you know, it was, I knew that going out there, it was, they were going to win and they were going to win very soon. Um, so it had promising uh, results. That's the reason why I went out there. So then after my first year there, I was literally about to walk into um, the orientation for the new school year I got a phone call from my old classmate at Texas A&M Commerce um he was in the grad school program with me and he's the assistant AD here now at Northeast Texas College um coach Hargrove he's the athletic trainer and assistant AD and he calls me he's like hey we have a softball opening are you interested and I'm like oh my gosh you know this is I'm a 4A coach in the state of Texas. I might not get an opportunity to coach college ever again, you know? And so, uh, but also in the back of my mind, I was like, Haley, you're going to have three jobs in three years. That's not a good look, you know? But if it's progressed the right way, I think that I had to bet on myself. And that's pretty much how I got to Northeast, you, you know, just like, constantly um, betting on myself, you know, uh, Tyler Gillum, the head coach of the Savannah Bananas says it, you know, he even has shirts like bet on yourself, you have to believe in yourself. And so um, without, you know, betting on myself, I definitely don't think that I would be, you know, here at Northeast and progress the way that I have progressed going from, you know, a 1A coach to now a head college coach, which is crazy to even think about. And this whole time, I've never been an assistant softball coach. I've always been a head coach. So that's a pro and a con. <laughs> well, I, I really appreciate you sharing those steps of your journey because it sounds like each one, you know, led to that next level, that next experience, and it brought you to, to your current job. Now, looking back, can, you've had tremendous success, as I mentioned. Can you put your finger on maybe one or even two things that you did as a leader that allowed that success to occur at each one of your stops? I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but can you think of anything uh, that was common to every single one of your stops? Yes, sir. I think the first thing would be that I put myself in a position, uh, whether that be a room, an email, um, you know, a quick phone call, text. I put myself in a position to learn from others, whether that's picking up the phone, sending an email, being in the right rooms, knowing the right people, being able to network because the athletic directors are now, you know, like their network is now my network. And so if you don't uh, know somebody, somebody knows somebody that's know somebody. And I feel like I've done a great job at just like putting the pieces together and connecting. If I don't know something, I pick up the phone and I'm able to get in touch with someone who does or who can help me. So that's the first thing. I feel like networking is easy when you're just yourself. So with that being said, being yourself um, requires you to bet on yourself. And with, you know, with just betting on yourself, you believe in yourself, um, you ask good questions, you're not afraid to pick up the phone and call somebody, you know, cold call, because I've done that multiple times, um, you know, just going up, seizing the moment when you're like, oh my gosh, fangirling over a coach, you know, at ABCA, I fangirled over the Vanderbilt coaches and just being able to just walk up to them and introduce yourself, talk slowly and, you know, make it known who you are and what everything that you want to learn from them, you know? So just bet on yourself and put yourself in a position uh, to learn from others and truly soak up all the knowledge that they can give you and the help that they can give you and advice. Well, I, I love it. You just gave about uh, three or four tools for our toolbox. So save something for that last segment. <laughs> okay. Um, one more uh, follow-up and then we're going to take a break. Um, at the start of our interview, you, know, you mentioned that 
um, you know, coming out of college, you thought about being a GA, uh, but you wanted to get on and, and looking back, you thought you probably could have, should have stayed as a GA. Uh, your career has now led you to becoming a head coach at the college level. So looking back with that perspective that experience and wisdom gives you, um, how do you feel now? Was this the way it was supposed to be? You having these other leadership opportunities that allowed you to be uh, uh, your uh, former coach? You know, he could he knew you were a player, but he could look back on that resume and say, wow, Haley's been killing it uh, as a high school head coach. Uh, what's your feelings now about that path to becoming a college coach? Because, again, very quickly, um, I never thought about becoming a college coach until I had had some success at the high school level. And then I said, Hey, I, I want to be a college coach. And here I am at 35 years old. Uh, and you know, they're only hiring, you know, 22 year old GAs out of college. And then yeah. eventually I, I did get hired, had eight years at the college level, loved it, but found uh, high school was the best fit for me. So the question for you is, okay, uh, you know, do you think this was the way it was supposed to be uh, for Haley Caldwell? Um, yes, sir. I, I do. I'm a firm believer in, you know, what's meant for you will always be there for you and you'll find your way to it. So, um, in hindsight, yeah, it would have been awesome to be a GA, but at the same time, I just don't think that I was fully ready to go straight into college. Um, I wish that I would have been because it would have just gave me uh, more tools to use, you know, what, if I was a GA, would I stay in college? Um, would I been a college assistant coach? Like there's so many questions that I could ask myself, but I feel like going straight into a head softball coach in the state of Texas, as we know, is very competitive. Um, I feel like it allowed me to, um, kind of cut ties with being a player and transition, from a player into a coach at a lower level, you know, at a small 1A school. And that was, that gave me time to separate the two and kind of slowly yeah. transition into that role. Um, and then, you know, kind of just, uh, I don't know, just be more grown up and mature, you know, in that position, I think, you know, and, you know, go from a player to a coach is a huge step. So, right. Um, so yeah, I feel like that was definitely meant for me. And now as a college coach, I want a young assistant coach that I can help and mentor and do all those things, um, and kind of just lead them down the path, um, of, you know, Hey, like you're in college now, but you know, like whatever you use in college, will set you up for high school. If you ever decide to go that route or vice versa, you know, right. No, and again, that, I think that's a great response. You know, we we tell high school kids all the time when they're looking at colleges, it's all about finding the right fit, you know, the right fit academically, athletically, um, you know, school size. You know, you talked about going to a big school, you know, and for you, yeah. you had to find the right fit. Good yeah. stuff. We're going to go and take that break. But uh, our guest today is Haley Caldwell. She's the head softball coach. At Northeast Texas Community College. We're going to hear all about that when we come back. So please stay with us. This is the Educational AD Podcast. We want to say thank you to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider for schools and colleges. I don't think I need to say anything more, but I'm going to. Go to hometownticketing.com. Their team is going to show you how to set up and sell tickets online, not just for your athletic events, but for things like school plays and concerts, school dances, even graduation. And here's the best part. Every school gets assigned a dedicated client success manager that's going to provide you hands-on support every step of the way. That's every step of the way. Go to hometownticketing.com to get started. It's digital ticketing that offers more. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. You know, your student athletes are on social media, and if they're not seeing content uh, promoting the teams and celebrating their accomplishments, you are really missing out. Go to Gipper.com. They're going to have you creating world-class marketing content in seconds, and it's so easy, even I can do it. Gipper's used and trusted by over 4,000 high school and college programs across the country. It's professional graphic design made easy. 
Go to gipper.com to get started. And we want to say thanks to Snap Raise. Have you ever spent weeks and weeks with a fundraiser and then been disappointed with the results? Stop right here. Go to snapraise.com. It's hands down the best online fundraiser out there. We used it at our school with our teams with tremendous success. Our coaches loved it. Our parents loved it because it works. Go to snapraise.com. You can check out their other great platforms. But if you're looking for a fundraiser, you found it. Go to snapraise.com. You're going to be glad you did. Hey, Jake, we actually use Gipper and Hometown Ticketing Sports, and both are amazing. I love using Gipper because you can transition your team colors and your school, the logos. It's so easy to use, and you can pre-make them. That way you can just have them ready to post um, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all of the social things. And it's super easy to use. Hometown ticketing, kind of the same thing. You have it set up on a link and, you know, 24, 48 hours ahead of time, you can post that and the fans and everybody can purchase it super easy. Well, I really appreciate you sharing that. Now, um, uh, real quick on uh, on Gipper, uh, I am not a, uh, a tech savvy uh, person by any stretch of the imagination, but you probably heard me say Gipper so easy, even I can use it. Okay. Um, were you concerned? Were you worried about, you know, am I going to be able to utilize this platform? Uh, because I remember my experience with Gipper training was just tremendous. They even had me doing it uh, in, in about 20 minutes. Yeah. I mean, like I, I love graphic design and I love promoting our kids. I think um, the hardest part was just like transitioning because transitioning the graphics from like maybe a football graphic that was already set up to like gear it towards like more softball or baseball or, you know, just taking a football graphic um, and then making it into, you know, like a, like a um, flyer or something like that. But it was, it was super easy to use, you know, even though you're not like super high tech, uh, I feel like anybody can use it. My kid, my kids love the graphics that I make. All right. And one quick, we don't want to forget about hometown ticketing. Thank you for giving them a shout out. It, is it just the softball team that uses hometown? Is it the uh, athletic no. department at Northeast Texas Community College? Yes, it's the whole athletic department. And the reason why we did that is because we went cashless concessions. So it just ties right in with no cash. So it's super easy. And my kids are always asking me, hey, is the link up? Is the link up? Because they want their parents want to go ahead and buy it, get it out of the way and you know, driving from far, it just creates a hassle. So um, whenever we post that, you know, a couple of days or a day in advance, like it's already boom, they know the process and it's good to go. And I also send that link to other schools before we arrive, uh, before they arrive to our facility. Yeah, you got to let the visiting team and uh, fans know about that. Great stuff. Yes, Thanks sir. so much for the shout out. Okay. No I'm problem. Gonna share, I'm going to share that with, uh, with hometown and Gipper. Uh, for our listeners, uh, just want to remind you, our guest today is Haley Caldwell. She's the head softball coach at Northeast Texas Community College. Uh, if you just tuned in, uh, you've missed uh, Haley's journey. Tremendous background as an athlete and a coach. And now uh, she's just finished her first year as the head coach at Northeast Texas. Haley, talk a little bit about coming in you know, taking over a program, your first college head job, um, you know, what was that like, uh, you know, in season one of the uh, Haley Caldwell era? <laughs> um, so I got hired in late August. So I just had to roll with the schedule that was already made, the athletes that were already here. We didn't have any in, uh, athletes leave um, with the coaching change. So that was nice. Um, I had 21 athletes and we just really just rolled straight into it. Um, there was a lot of behind the scenes operation stuff that, um, I had to learn and coach Morgan, our athletic director, head baseball coach, um, taught me just every day. You know, I think I talked to coach Morgan still every single day, just learning and, you know, trying to figure out because, I mean, like at the end of the day, you're not going to have everything figured out in year one. You're going to be constantly growing. 
um, on recruiting side, on operation side, you know, scheduling games, scheduling buses. I mean, there's the operation side, I feel like is um, a lot and you also have to coach on top of that. So it's a lot of work transitioning from high school where high school, you can just go home for the day and not really have to worry about, you know, extra recruiting stuff or, you know, you can actually decompress for the day as a high school coach as a college coach like you never really turn off like you're always recruiting you're always you know answering phone calls or you're always you know talking to people or coaches and things like that so that's part of the process that um was a part of the transition part of becoming a head college coach now um Junior college, as you mentioned in Texas, very competitive. Um, as you look to go from season one to, you know, the following seasons, where do you see your biggest challenge as a coach? And, you know, what are some of the things you're really excited about moving forward? Well, I think the biggest challenge is, um, to get an assistant coach here um, to work with me. That's one of the things I'm hiring an assistant. So um, there's that. And I think um, just I'm super hard on myself. So I want to be the best for the kids and the best for our program and athletic staff. So that's one of the challenges because I feel like I can never rest. And sometimes being your best requires rest. And so, you know, taking moments to yourself for a day off just to do, you know, simple stuff that doesn't involve softball. And um, so that's one of the two challenges. And then I think I'm most excited to get my own recruits here. I know with the coaching changes, everybody always says that, but I'm most excited to get my own kids that I've built relationships with um, that want to come play specifically for me at Northeast. Um, and I'm super excited to bring in 19 girls to the freshman class, which I've personally recruited all by myself. Yay. Um, and that was, that was so hard, you know, like just to do it all by myself year one, I didn't have an assistant coach after the fall. Um, so I went through the entire spring by myself. It was not easy, um, but I did the best that I could for the girls and the girls knew and, you know, the leaders stepped up and and they were able to help each other out. So I'm super excited, like I said, um, to get my own kids here and really just have the sophomores. I kept six sophomores and they're really just the core group of sophomores um, players on the team and to lead them, lead the freshmen. That's going to be super exciting to see. Okay, we get uh, a lot of high school coaches, a lot of ADs across the country, uh, even in Texas, that are listening to this yes. podcast. So, give us that uh, give us that ninety second recruiting pitch about Northeast Texas Community College. You know, academics, athletics. You know, the town. Uh, you know, ready, go. <laughs> well, I feel like being in Mount Pleasant, Texas, you have to recruit a certain type of kid. I am that certain type of kid. I was a small town kid. I wasn't really used to the city. That's what I'm looking for in an athlete. I'm looking for big town kids who want to get out away from the big town, um, who, you know, want to come to a smaller school where they can walk everywhere and they can walk outside their dorms and walk straight to the softball field. Um, I'm looking for kids who are multi-sport athletes that are not afraid to pick up a hula ho or you know a weed eater and you know just get straight to work on field work because at the junior college level um, we have to do all of our field work you know it's it's just the right type of fit for kids who are academically sound um, but also the kids who are you know not too sure about you know, the school work, you know, like they, they may struggle in school and junior college might be the great fit for them to come and, you know, get school under their ropes like I did as a player and, you know, succeed from the smaller classrooms. So, and then obviously like I'm going to shout out myself because I feel like I've worked really hard to um, get to where I am and not only, you know, do I coach the girls on the field, but I also care about them outside of it like I have girls that still text me from my high school um, where I coached at you know three or four years ago and they're asking me for workouts or you know um, my players FaceTime me all the time so I feel like 
Um, yes, I'm a softball coach, but at the same time, like I'm a role model for young women. Um, let's talk academics real quick. Uh, and, and again, I know community colleges offer, I'm a graduate of community college, had a great time there. It was yeah. great for me to prepare me for, you know, that four year experience, both football and track and for the rest of my life. But academically, I know JUCOs, um, there's a lot of flexibility, but each yeah. one also has maybe one or two programs that are prominent. Uh, yeah. What are some of the academic programs that you want to give a shout out to at your school? So my school specifically, we have a really good physical therapy assistant program. We also have, you know, our own nursing program where they can uh, play softball and do nursing for two years. And then that, then they get into the actual nursing program here on campus. Um, we also have ties to Texas A&M, Texarkana, and Texas A&M Commerce, where our students can go there for a price cut. Um, and um, so we have that relationship with those universities. We also have different stuff on campus. Like I know our ag program is really good. Um, so nursing, PTA, ag program. We also have Shelby Automotive um, Parts Program. So if anybody's interested in, you know, um, Mustangs or anything like that, like we have those automated and it's like an actual program. Like it's not, it's like a degree certificate, things like that. But I mean, we pretty much have everything, you know, and not all of my girls do just one thing. We have kinesiology and criminal justice, fire, EMT, like we have everything. So um, business is one of the top ones as well. So literally mm -hmm. just a little bit of everything. Oh, no, that, that's great. Great commercial. You know, you, you mentioned ag uh, and, you know, FFA. Uh, my high school uh, in the state of Washington, we had the largest FFA chapter in the United States at the time. This wow. was back in the 70s. Now, I was not part of it, but my best friend, who was also on the football team, uh, was the president. So I heard all kinds of great FFA tales. Um, I bet I digress. Uh, last <laughs> question for this segment. You certainly lived this. Small town kid, small school that ended up going to JUCO and ended up playing and succeeding quite well at the division one level. So it's a captain obvious question. What do you say to that student athlete or that parent that says, Oh, I don't know if we want to, you know, do junior college. We need to go D one right out of high school. What's your response to that? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> um, it's not tough for me to answer. It's just, you know, sometimes people don't want to hear it. Um, right. Do you want to go and sit one or two years at a division one program because you're not the all-star that you were in your hometown or on your select ball team? Because guess what? When you get to the division one, division two level, um, even the JUCO level, um, cause there's a lot of really badass um, JUCO teams out there that compete with division one and division two. Um, do you want to go and sit your first two years and end up, you know, not getting playing time? Or would you rather go to a junior college and possibly be the number two or the starter, you know, or get, you know, a uh, pinch running time or literally anything else, you know? Um, but oftentimes parents and kids don't want to hear that. It's like D1 bus, D1, uh, D D2 bus, you know? And instead of saying that, I feel like, it should be narrowed down to where am I going to go to get the best education and where am I going to be able to go to get the most playing time to set me up to go to that four year. If that's a four year and you're some all-star cool, which happens, you know, which does happen as freshmen. But um, I think that you have to be a certain type of kid. You have to come from a certain type of family and um, you have to be a certain type of player to go be quote unquote, that it girl, you know, shout out OU or OSU or Texas, you know, that have freshmen coming into those programs that are the it girls. So that's pretty much what I would say to a parent or an athlete that, and they probably wouldn't like my response, but that's how it goes this day and age. 
No, I, I, I think, uh, you know, you presented that very well. And, you know, let's face it, you know, you are a walking, talking example of how that can work and turn out in a very positive way. Great stuff. Um, boy, I really wish we had some more time, um, but we're not done yet. Uh, we always wrap up with what we call the athletic director's toolbox. Now, you're not an athletic director, but you certainly know your way around high school and, and college sports. So we're going to take our final break. We're going to hear from a couple of our sponsors, including athletic surveys. And when we come back, I'm going to challenge you to send out a brand new athletic director, or we might say a brand new leader, on the very first job. But I'm only going to let you put three items in their toolbox. So uh, mm. let's take that break. And when we come back, we're going to see what Haley Caldwell puts in her new athletic director toolbox.